What's up YouTube? I'm the nice one and today we are making a troll type of character. Uh, something for your other characters to fight in the animations and the games you are making. Um, yeah, we're gonna do a troll character. We're actually not gonna be using our base model that we've been using before. We're actually gonna make this thing entirely from scratch. So uh, yeah, hopefully you find that helpful. Uh, we're also gonna do a little bit of a, what do you call it? Model sculpt, model sculpting. Uh, sculpting and we're gonna be adding some faces and eyes and stuff like that so that's a bit new and uh, hopefully you find it useful so uh, I'll stop rambling now and why don't we just jump straight into it okay so start with a cube add some couple edge loops around the center and to the left and right of the x-axis and then start rounding off this cube to make a cylinder shape um, once you have the cylinder shape good and ready for you, now select the faces along the top and scale that down to make um, kind of round off the top a little bit. Uh, you can also tweak some of the edge loops, edges. Now extrude down from the bottom of the cylinder and then squ uh, wrap, scale down those bottom faces as well to make this egg shape. And this is basically going to be the initial block shape of the head that we're going to start with. Uh, from this point, what you're going to want to do is uh, select the faces along the x-axis. Uh, so select four, uh, four faces along the x-axis on both sides, making sure object x is enabled. And then extrude that out because what we're going to do is use that to make the ears. At this point, we're just blocking everything out. Don't feel too obligated to make things too detailed or too clean. It's just blocking out the general shape and we'll add detail in later. Um, so that's what you see me doing here. I'm basically just making the general shape of the ears uh, in basically a way that I want it. And just doing some quick modifications using the basic transform tools. Checking out in smooth preview mode just to make sure that it's kind of to, to my liking at the moment and nothing too crazy. Uh, and now I'm gonna tweak the cheeks a little bit to make it look like, to shape the head a little bit more, less like an egg and more of like an actual face. Uh, so you see me how I rotate the edges there. And now I'm gonna extrude out a little bit more of the ears to make them more sharper, like longer ears, kind of like an elf that you might expect, expect to see. And then once I'm happy with that, I'm just gonna go into smooth preview mode and tweak the ears a little bit more to get it to a point that I'm a bit more happy with. Now I'm gonna extrude out the nose by clicking two faces in front on the Z axis and just scaling them down to make a like a very simple nose there and then doing the smooth edit preview changes to make the nose look like it has a bridge and also more of a nostril shape and also adding a bit of a brow and the indent of where the eyes are gonna be. Now I'm gonna extrude the bottom faces, uh, three of the bottom faces front facing on the Z axis to make the cheek or uh, the chin. And I'm gonna rotate the where the, the neck is gonna be and also uh, the side of the face a little bit more to make a more of a pronounced jaw shape. Here what you see me doing is extruding out the top three faces now to make the top lip. And then again, I'm working a smooth preview feature to kind of polish that off a little bit. And then I'm going to round off the top of the head. Now I brought in another model to make sure the height is consistent. And so I extruded out the, the neck and then I extruded it again one more time to represent the top of the body and then extruded on the X axis to make the body thicker and then added a waist by adding an edge loop. Now I'm going to extrude out the shoulders and then I'm going to extrude out the biceps Extrude out one more time to represent where the elbows are going to be, and then one more time after that to show where the forearms are. Now you see me doing a little bit of scaling to make it a little more accurate, and then I'm going to extrude out there to bring show the wrist and then the fingers. And again, I'm just going to tweak these really rough blocked out shapes to make it look more like how an actual forearm might be or how a bicep might be, and just give them some thickness and some a little more um, substance to it so it doesn't look too too skinny. I'm adding a few more details here in terms of how the shape of the actual arm is going to be. And again, I'm working off of geometry preview because if I'm going to switch over to smooth preview in just a second. Oh, right there. And then, uh, yeah, just do a little more tweaks. Now I'm going to bring out the chest a little bit to make them look more barrel chested. Um, that might have been a little too much right there. So I'm just going to bring it back, bring up his waist, and then also bring out his shoulder blades to make the body look a lot more realistic in terms of proportions. Uh, now there, I'm bringing in the wrist um, to show where the, yeah, just to show where the wrist will be. And then I'm extruding out two faces on the hand to create the thumb. And once I'm happy with the base of the thumb, I'm going to extrude out two more faces because your thumb is made out of two joints. And so when you rig it later on in the future, having those extra polys around the joints will make it a lot easier for deformation. 
Now what I realized is that I didn't do it on both sides, my object X symmetry wasn't on. And so to fix that, I instead deleted one half and then went space mesh mirror to mirror the side that I didn't delete to the opposite side and have it perfectly symmetrical. And so yeah, you see me again tweaking out the chest a little bit. And then here, what I'm going to do is fix up the torso a little bit more and get ready to extrude out the legs. I added a couple edge loops so that when I extrude the legs down, um, there would be a gap between the legs because obviously there's a gap between your legs. Um, and so having those extra edge loops directly down the center of the model helps, helps with that extrusion. Now I'm going to add the knees by adding a couple edge loops, beveling there, and then uh, again, because it's a joint and I know it's going to deform, so the extra polys will help. And then I'm going to extrude out the feet right there so that, um, yeah, so that the feet uh, look a little more natural in terms of how they're coming out of the legs. I'm going to do a few more tweaks and position the knees of where I want it to be on this particular character. And then once I'm happy with that and once I'm happy with how the ankles are and the calves are and rounding out the rest of the legs, what you see me doing now is actually target welding some of the vertices to the bottom uh, edges so that it looks like it has a more of a natural groin area. And then I'm just going to round out the, the legs a bit more and make it a lot more aligned with his crotch and his butt. Um, and yeah, so that's pretty much what you see me doing here. Just a few more tweaks to make sure everything looks a bit more appropriate. Now what you see me doing is going to vertex mode and editing some of the vertices so that it looks like his stance is a little more natural and more in line with where, how his spine is going to be. And then I'm just adding a few the exam, more details around the nostril area right there, adding a few edge loops and rotating them so it's a clearer nostril. And then indenting where the eyes is and then giving more detail for the top of the lip. Uh, yeah, that's what you see me doing here. Now I'm tweaking the bottom lip a little bit more and uh, our base model is pretty much there. I'm going to add a few more details in terms of fixing up the bicep and the forearm, maybe adding some triceps and making the bicep protrude a little bit more. If you have a reference art for some anatomy, that's always helpful in terms of making these types of base models. Uh, it's always good to look at art, art and reference art so that you're kind of working off reality and it looks a little more believable. And yeah, so now what you see me doing is fixing up the butt a little bit there. And uh, yeah, I'm just doing some tweaks. Oh, I tried to add the sternum for this particular character. It wasn't quite working in this box modeling technique. So what I end up doing is pretty much getting rid of that and undoing and pretty much adding the sternum and a little more of the musculature toning and sculpting, which you'll see later on. Okay, and yeah, we got our, our base model is pretty much there at this point. Um, again, doing a few more tweaks just to get it to exactly how I want it to be, a lot more cleaner than I expected. And now what we're going to do is add a first skirt. So to do that, make a plane, make a flat plane, reduce the subdivisions to one, add a few edge loops around the center, and then next start extruding the edges on the x-axis to basically wrap around our character's waist and uh, area, and then use the bridge tool to connect the edges at the back, adding an edge loop straight down the middle to maintain symmetry, and then just doing some transforms. Now what you see me doing is adjusting some of the vertices to make it a little asymmetrical and make it look a little sharper, kind of like how actual fur is, it's never perfectly symmetrical. And there you go, now we got just a rough shape of how a skirt is going to be. Okay, now after that, we're going to apply some thickness to the skirt by going Control e 0.05 thickness to give it a little more substance. And then we're just going to scale down the top faces so that it looks like it fits around his waist a little more naturally. Now what we're going to do is take another plane, reduce the subdivisions to one, add a few edge loops. And basically this plane is going to make a belt, which is going to go wrap around our character, similar to how the skirt did. Um, but it's a lot shorter, and again, it's just a belt to keep the skirt in place. Um, and yeah, so that's what you see me doing here. Once I have the most of the edges faces in position, I'm going to bridge it together and apply some thickness, 0 0.05 control E, and then just position it on our character how I would expect it to be fit, fitting on, on his body. And uh, yeah, now what I'm going to do, at this point I'm pretty much just making armor for our, our character. So I'm going to take another plane, reduce the subdivisions to one, position it above the shin, and basically make shin pads, kind of like what you expect to see from soccer or maybe even a goalie in hockey. And yeah, that's what you see me doing here. I'm just fitting it to his shin and indicating where the calves will be because I know that that section is going to rotate, fit around the leg. 
and then just giving it some more substance to show where the knee, how it also protects the knee. Duplicate the belt we had made earlier, flip it, and scale it down so that it fits the ankle, or fits the calf more and the ankle. And that'll represent the straps that connect this shorter, shoulder, this, uh, not shoulder, shin plate to his leg. And then I'm just going to mirror that to the opposite leg so that just so that the, there's a bit of balance to our character. And now I'm just going to go ahead and make some pauldrons. So take a flat plane, add a couple, maybe six edge loops, it looks like, and then take the middle four and then bring that up so that it looks almost like a football shoulder pad. Very substantial. And then basically take the edges and rotate them around so that they fit around our character a little more naturally once it's ready to be positioned. So there you go. I'm rotating it. I'm also rounding it out so it's not much of a less of a square and more of a rounded shape because I imagine it'd be kind of like a spiked turtle um, sh shoulder pad. And then I'm extruding down to show how the pauldron is going to connect to the strap that will go around his body. I'll apply some thickness to give it a little more weight because I know this thing is armor and it needs to have a more substance than just cloth. And now what you see me doing here is I'm going to add a bunch of edge loops that basically create a perimeter around the face and then select the faces that are around the perimeter and extrude that up to create a nice bevel effect uh, just to give it a little more detail like that and polish it up. Now I'm going to duplicate, duplicate the belt a bit more again and then add a belt right where his um, shoulder pauldron connects and wraps around his body and then just do some basic transforms of position and scale to make the belt look like it fits his chest more accurately and more appropriately. Now I'm going to add a loop. Now I'm going to add a belt loop that goes around his bicep, kind of like what you see me doing here. And uh, yeah, so I think we're in good shape. Now, actually, I ended up deciding to add a brow because I knew I was going to model this, uh, sculpt this later. So I just wanted to get a brow in there to show where it would be and then make him look a lot more angry by uh, rotating the position of the vertices like that. Okay, and then once we have the brow there, what we're going to start doing is adding a few more details. So we're going to add a spike by taking a cube, adding a few edge loops, and then target welding the top vertices to the middle one to make a try pyramid type shape. And this pyramid shape is going to be spikes that we're going to add later in the future. But actually first what I end up doing is uh, copying the shin armor that you see there and then taking it to the forearm um, in order to get some balance, you know. I figured it was more of like an arbitrary decision why I did that. I felt like he, this character needed a forearm armor on his right side because he had a shoulder pauldron armor on his left uh, just to give it the sense of balance a little bit. And then I'm just duplicating the straps to make it look like it fits there. Now I'm positioning the spike along the pauldron, and I'm just going to duplicate it a couple times uh, and scale it down and position it in a way that looks like it kind of wraps. Not wraps, is not wraps, but basically that the spikes are all over the pauldron, and uh, it looks a little more natural that way. And I'm just going to duplicate it two more times. And uh, yeah, once I'm, once I'm done that, what I end up doing... Uh, is pretty much I'm just going to end up selecting all of the all of the spikes going mesh combined so that I can transform them all at once um, for myself. And uh, yeah, at that point, I'm just going to duplicate a few more straps um, to the opposite side. And uh, and then now actually what I'm going to end up doing is adding a belt loop or a belt uh, buckle. Actually, that's a better word to say. it. I'm going to add a belt buckle by making a C-shaped belt buckle by taking a cube, uh, scaling it down, and ba basically making a C shape by adding a few edge loops and then extruding up from one end and then extruding right or um, yeah, right on the X axis. And then I bevel it by selecting the front faces and scaling it down. And then I'm gonna add the belt loop or the piece of metal that goes through the hole, uh, the belt loop, uh, by doing the same thing, just taking a cube, um, and this time no special transforms because it's just a cube. I'm just going to take the front face, scale it down to give it a bevel effect. Then I'm going to do mesh combine so that the uh, so that the uh, mesh is a single piece, and then just bring it over to other uh, belts to make them look a little more appropriate, like the right side, and then the front front one at the top there. And yeah, we're pretty much there in terms of making the base model for this character. He's looking pretty good. I'm going to duplicate the spikes and bring it over to the right um, forearm guard to maintain that kind of spike motif thing going for this character. And uh, yeah, we're pretty much there.
Now what you see me doing is I'm going to bring the model into Blender because this is where I'm going to do my sculpting. You can use ZBrush or any other tool you want, but I just happen to decide to use Blender here. And basically what I'm going to do is add detail to the face by basically caving in where the eye sockets are going to be, the eye sockets, um, and then adding some more mesh and more polys to where the cheeks are, maybe using the clay strips to add more detail on the brow and the and the cheeks and the front lips, uh, and then also using the deflate tool to kind of bring things up, maybe using the crease tool to kind of define the nose a lot more so it looks a lot more appropriate. And uh, yeah, and then I'm also going to use the sculpting tools to basically clean up the front of the body so it may give his muscles a lot more definition, like for example his abs, of course, he's going to have some, he's going to be ripped, this character. And then um, once I'm done with his upper torso, I'm probably going to move on to his arms by giving some definition there. Like, for example, defining out the bicep, the tricep, the shoulders, the three shoulder muscles. Um, and yeah, once I'm happy with that, I'm going to scale up. I find that I have to scale up the front um, belt loop because it didn't quite fit after doing the transforms on the after doing the sculpting on the base model. But yeah, we're pretty much there in terms of getting this base model to a good place. Now I'm going to add the eyes by taking a cube and adding a subdivision modifier to bring the subdivisions way down. And then I'm going to take that cube or sphere now and position it on the on the eye where I want it to be. And then use the sculpting tools to basically mold the eyelids or may basically mold the eye sockets around the actual eyeball so that they look like they connect a little more naturally. Um, and uh, one tip is to make sure you have your symmetry feature enabled in Blender in order to do some sculpting like that. Um, but yeah, uh, some sculpting features are nice to add details later on. Uh, now what I'm going to do is add eyelids. So basically I'm going to apply the, the modifier and then duplicate it and then delete the top half of one of the top half of one duplicate and then the bottom half of the other duplicate because that's going to represent the two eyelids, the bottom and top eyelid. And then I'm going to put the eye inside the eyelid and then rotate the eyelid in a way that looks a little natural and how an actual eyelid would look and apply some thickness um, to the eyelids so that they don't just look like flat planes and they have a bit more of a, they look like more like skin. I'm going to position it back into the body, into the mesh like that, and then basically just rotate around the eyelid so that it looks more appropriate and then duplicate to the other, other side so that the character has eyes. And uh, yeah, there we go. And now once I'm happy with that, I'm going to go into sculpting mode and basically make the iris by caving in a hole in the center of the eyeball because your iris is actually just a hole that allows light to enter through the hole and then refract off the rods and cones in the back. And then that rods and cones are connected to your brain, resulting in what you see. Sorry, weird science uh, lecture right there. But yeah, that's pretty much how I made the eyes. And then you see the eye, like the actual color in the eyes and texture paint. Um, now I'm just going to add some rings, like a nose ring right there, and some earrings to make him look a little more intimidating. And yeah, we're pretty much there at this point. You can, this character is ready to get rigged and animated. Um, actually, what I end up doing is texture painting him later, so hopefully that comes in handy. But yeah, we're pretty much done at this point, so let me know how useful this video is for you. Oh, actually, I forgot one more thing. I'm making one more spike, similar to how we made the spikes for his pauldrons. And actually, this spike is going to end up being the fangs, his fangs, his bottom uh, set of fangs. And so that's what you see me doing here. I'm just kind of making a spike shape, adding a few edge loops to make it look a little more rounded. Um, and then once I'm happy with the shape of the fang, I'm going to scale it down so it looks a little more appropriate to how a tooth should be in proportion to the head. And then position it in the bottom lip like that. Real, uh, Yeah, just position it nicely in the bottom lip there. Anyway, hopefully you found the video useful. Let me know um, Let me know what you'd like to see next. I try to keep these things short so you can follow along and it doesn't take up two hours of your life, kind of like how making this thing did. But if you want to see more longer form content, let me know. Um, and I'll try my best. Um, yeah, okay, anyway, that's it for me. Uh, I'll see you in the next video, okay? Bye. Thanks for watching the video. If you like my content, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Let me know down below what you want to see next or just check out some of these other great videos. Thanks for tuning in. I'll talk to you later.